Hey, this is Bryce, and thanks for tuning to my YouTube channel, Jack of Trades. In this video, I'm going to go over some custom wheels that I've been working on for my Aristocraft Kangaroo project. Um, so I'll get right into it. I started off with some original wheels, um, these yellow plastic ones. Um, I think of the four of them, actually I actually have five of these. Uh, only two of them are not cracked. Actually, that's not true. That's cracked, that's cracked, that's cracked. That is not cracked. So I have one good will out of all of them. Um, so that kind of started me off on this journey of designing some custom wheels for this car. Uh, at this point I have three of these cars to build with no wheels or tires. Um, so as I was going through my tire bin, um, I came across some tires. So I kind of, I was kind of dumb about how I went about this. Instead of trying to find tires to fit these wheels, um, I found tires that I wanted to use and then I designed wheels for those tires. Um, this probably would have been a better approach. I had these tires. Um, for the rears I wanted to use kind of something with a smaller wheel size than the stock. So on the stock wheels, the front and rear wheels are the same diameter. And I was going for more of a, I guess a traditional buggy look with, you know, like the RC10s had larger front wheels than rear wheels. Um, so I had these, um, to me, off-roader tires. These are the 9805183s, which are used on the um, Thundershot and Grasshopper 2. Um, so I had some of those, and then I had some uh, vintage CRP um, 4230s, and these are meant for Schumacher cars, uh, fitting 1.9 to 2.0 size wheels. So that's what I wanted to use on the four-wheel drive version of the buggy that I was building. Basically, uh, the Dolphin, the Kangaroo is a two-wheel drive version of the Dolphin, which is the four-wheel drive version of the Kangaroo. That being said, um, these rear wheels are custom diameter. These wheels are actually the stock diameter, but they have a custom offset. Uh, and the reason for that is when I was putting some parts together on the front end of that car, um, just to size things out, um, I realized that the axles I had were going to push the wheels out six millimeters more than stock. So then these have a negative offset of six millimeters to bring them back towards the car so that we weren't um, increasing the track width of the vehicle, at least not noticeably, right? So that's where the design of these wheels, and that's what all these wheels are based on. So all these wheels are kind of the progression of designing and printing wheels that I've been going through over the last couple of weeks. Um, and we'll start on this end with what I started with was the stock wheels and I came up with a design and I printed out the, the front one first um, and this is kind of there's some funky stuff going on in this wheel that I didn't like so I immediately abandoned that and then I printed out a more conventional set of wheels which we see here and these are printed with an FDM printer um, so they're okay they're good runners but they're not I wouldn't say they're aesthetically appealing, uh, just because you can tell that they're 3D printed and they're kind of, you can see the layers and whatnot. Um, but I printed out a couple of these and, and a couple more just to kind of thinking that I would run them. And they're perfectly usable as they are. But then I was going for aesthetics, right? So I wanted something cleaner and smoother. And I knew you could get that with the uh, SLA prints, um, which is the resin prints. Um, so I started messing around with my resin printer I'm trying to get good prints. Uh, I hadn't used it in a couple of years, so I was kind of coming up to speed on it again. I'm um, trying to figure out the settings to get good prints. Um, and I was using old resin, so I had some of this, this is supposed to be clear resin. Um, and it wasn't printing very good, which is why I made several sets. Well, not several, I have a complete set and some extra fronts. Um, and I kept playing around with that. And then I wanted to get into detailing uh, the wheels, adding little bits of detail. I wanted to see what the limits were of my SLA printer as far as how fine of a detail I could get out of a print with features that might be considered hard where you have tiny features within a well or you know if with that resin it kind of wicks into that well and doesn't necessarily want to escape when the part is retracted. Um, and then some letter embossing as well. And obviously you can't see it from here which is why I have some video footage coming after this um, of these wheels under a microscope where we can actually get into the nitty-gritty detail and see the the resolution of the uh, LCD that's used as a mask for um, printing these wheels. 
it, it's kind of interesting hopefully <laughs> that's that's what i want to take advantage of in this video is is that uh that footage under the microscope of these wheels um so this is conventional material the, the, the thing with conventional um, sla prints is that it's very brittle it's it's like glass almost um, i would say more brittle than acrylic um, and actually what i would like to do is do some testing um, some stress testing where i put this under a press uh, get a load cell on it and figure out how much um, how much force I can put on it before it fractures and how much deflection there is before it fractures as well um, anywho I digress um, I had some other gray material that I went ahead and printed on um, this is standard conventional material as well um, and then I started getting into the more uh, robust materials um, so this is supposed to be nylon like uh, material and by this point I in the in learning this uh, the SLA printer um, I, I'm starting to get to the point where I can actually resolve um, some pretty good details in these wheels um, so again you won't be able to see it in the camera here but what I have here is a bolt pattern around the outer diameter of the wheel um, and what that feature is there's a counter bore there um, and there's a little round over into the counter bore and then there's a little hex uh, an extruded hex feature inside the counter bore and on top of that extruded hex is an extruded boss circular boss so it's basically like a, a wheel nut with a either the, the head of a 12 point or um, the stud sticking through it wouldn't really be a stud in real world right it would probably be uh, like a 12 point bolt with that little um, boss that sticks out on the top sometimes um, so that is what I tried to model, and, and these features are small, these are, um, and I'll get into this when we get into the other video footage, but the hex is a one millimeter across flats, or 40 thousandths of an inch, and then that little stud is half a millimeter in diameter, or 20 thousandths of an inch. Um, and then I've got some embossed lettering um, that's, that sits proud by a quarter of a millimeter, or 10 thousandths of an inch. So, and then, once I got that kind of dialed in, um, I went ahead and printed off a complete set. Um, and these, again, these are all in my own custom design with the smaller diameter, um, the six millimeter offset, negative offset. So that takes me back to the original wheels. Um, and the process of doing these and messing around with tires, I found tires that are in production by Tamiya that fit the stock wheels. And so I've ordered a couple of sets of those. I actually had a set already, which is why this is kind of a dumb decision because I had these tires that fit the original wheels uh, from the get-go and I never bothered to look. Um, so what I'm running here are some super grippers. Um, these are the uh, 9804557 super grippers and these are used on the uh, super hot shot and the VQS. Um, and then for the rears, I'm running the wide spikes. So these are also super grippers, but they're the wide spikes. Um, and that are, these are the 53059s. Um, these are used on the Manta Rays and the Mad Fighters. So these you can still order. Um, they're not too expensive. If you look around, you can get them for 10 to 15 bucks a set. Um, I need to have at least three wheel sets. Um, so I've already got one. I'll have to modify these designs so that we go back to the stock geometry on these wheels um, and then I'll go ahead and start printing those out as well. I can't find yellow uh, nylon like resin. Um, it's, it's offered in, well, it's offered in gray, black, white, clear, green, as far as I could find. So what I might do is just go ahead and do a gray set or a white set and then paint them. I could always use the stock wheels, I just don't like the fact that they're cracked. So I'm going to go ahead and use some YouTube magic to get my uh, microscope over here. And there we go, we've got the microscope in front of us. <laughs> it's funny how that works, right? Um, so this is a great tool to have in your garage if you're getting older like me and your eyeballs don't work the way they used to. Um, it's basically a digital microscope with a nice big screen on it and it has the ability to capture photos and video. Um, so you've got the zoom in and out, it's basically a gear rack on the back side. You take something like this, 
you throw it up under the microscope, then you got a focus knob here. All right, there we go. So now you can kind of see one of those um, features, which are on the order of a millimeter. Uh, they fill up the screen. They're in pretty good detail. Um, so this is, to me, this is an invaluable tool to have if you're working on really small stuff. Uh, what I wanted to show here, you know, you can zoom out enough where if I wanted to go in and paint those letters, I could under the microscope. It's, it's something that I adopted a while ago. And I use it quite a bit just for smaller things. Um, I'll use it on circuit boards um, that I'm having a hard time reading. Um, you know, like trying to identify chips and whatnot. The reason I kind of went off on the deep end on this is because I wanted to add the ability to make custom wheels into my repertoire of what I can do with, with these RC builds. Moving forward in the future of you know this channel and some of the projects I work on, I, I'd like to really steer towards uh, like ultra custom, uh, kind of out of the box builds. Kind of what I did with the Baja, but even more so. So I started off with my kind of go-to technique of using an FDM printer to print the wheels, um, and they're, they're they're okay. You know, you could you could definitely run them. Here you can see kind of the build layers, uh, and this is printed in 0.2 millimeter layer thicknesses, um, which is about eight thousandths of an inch in each layer thickness, and then the nozzle diameter is 0.4 millimeters or sixteen thousandths. Um, so you can see the infills, you can see the layers, you can see some porosity in the infill. Um, so again, it's, it's an okay runner wheel, but it doesn't have the detail that you, you expect out of like an injection molded part. So that's when I started getting into the SLA printing. I spent quite a bit of time this week trying to refine, and, and one of the things I wanted to go for knowing that I could get the detail and, and trying to push the detail limits of the SLA printer is a beadlock look kind of on the outer um, rim of the wheel. So I, I put in these counter boards and I put in a little hex feature and then I put a stud sticking out of the hex. And we can see that here. Um, it took me a while to get to this where I could actually get some good detail out of the, um, the wheel or the, so these features, just to give you some perspective, that hex is um, one millimeter um, flat to flat. Um, and then it's uh, half a millimeter tall, and then the stud sticking out is half a millimeter diameter. You can see there's kind of like material that stuck around because it is liquid. Um, so we got some kind of wicking action that prevented this material from it leaving as it, as it re retracted. And actually this is probably the best feature where you can actually see a hex, whereas a lot of these didn't quite form properly. And that is probably a function of both the material and my settings um, for the print. And that's kind of what I've been refining. Um, so I just want to kind of show, to give an example or some perspective of size, um, Here's, this is a, a brand new surgical blade that was the number 11 surgical blade that was installed. And you can see the tip of it with respect to that feature. So that's a pretty tiny feature, right? Um, I can barely see this with my naked eye. My eyes aren't that good to start with. Um, so I can barely see that with the naked eye. And you see little bits of dust. There's, it looks like there's a, a metal chip in there. You can see my finger there. So that's a really small feature and actually the detail on it's pretty good. Um, this is an older SLA printer. Um, now they've got 4K, 6K, 8K um, where they can even get tighter resolution. Uh, so then I got some new material today. Um, this is a, a nylon like material. Um, so it should print really nice. Actually, let's back up a little bit. I just kind of want to show for comparison. Um, and then there's the, uh, we already saw that. That's the uh, logo. Um, and you can kind of see this grid pattern too. And I, I have to assume that is the, um, the individual pixels of LCD. Um, and then the lines, the line patterns, I think are actually scratches on my little um, 
not the screen, but the so the resin sits in a bath and there's a, a clear film because uh, it, it's it's cured with UV light. Um, so it's basically a, it's an optical line of sight curing process. So if you have scratches in your surfaces, um, that's going to optically um, project onto the part, and I believe that's probably what these scratches are, or scratches in my that film. Um, I, I think if I put a new film on, you, those scratches might go away. I'm just guessing, I haven't tried that yet. Um, and then I want to look at the new material, which is the nylon mic. And this actually, for this gave me some pretty good results on the first print. So here you can see the grid pattern of what I have to believe are the, the pixels again. You see the lines, uh, probably scratches. Um, and then there's the, uh, the embossed font text so it's not as sharp as it could be it's kind of rounded over but it still has pretty good detail um, just back out a little bit and if we go and look at those hexes um, I think the hexes came out better definitely more repeatable um, you still have some wicking action that where the material didn't escape. Um, but in general, these came out better. There's a bad one. So it's like every other one, at least every other one came out good. So I feel like this material printed better. I, I, you know, first shot, I, it seemed to print really well. Um, I like the material. So here you can kind of see you have an arc that is... Translate, and you can kind of see the pixelation of that arc. And so, yeah, I have to believe that this steps, these steps, or pixelation along here, are due to the resolution of my LCD screen. Um, so, if I went with higher resolution, these might—you'd probably still see them under a microscope, but they would go away a little bit because you can see one row after another after another. And that's kind of interesting, right? It is almost like a digital form of, well. <laughs> Yes, you're always limited by the resolution of your equipment. Uh, in this case, that resolution happens to be an LCD screen uh, or mask. It's, it's an LCD screen. This is kind of a stereolithography stereo type process. Uh, it, it's really interesting what you can see under a microscope. Um, so I just wanted to share that. Um, I have another set of wheels coming off the printer soon uh, that will have... I've made some small changes. Let's see if it made a difference on uh, those very tiny features. But the purpose of this was, you know, sure, you'll get a cool set of wheels out of it, but it's also helping to understand what you can and can't do with these printers. Um, one of the things I'd like to do is kind of do uh, some stress tests um, on these parts just to see what material is going to hold up better. So, you know, we've got three wheels now. We've got the FDM, we've got the standard material, and we have the nylon-like material. Um, I'm curious which one will hold up better. I would hope it would be the nylon-like material. I guess I'll leave it at that. Thank you for tuning in and watching to the end. Um, if you have any comments, leave them below. Uh, and take care. Have a good one. Bye.